And it's the heart of Napui. So what's going to be done? You want to see bike seizures? Oh, at least. <laughs> you know, the first out in the open sort of a attack that I've ever witnessed. It was really shocking eh, to see uh, a gang bash happen on our street here in Kaikohe. Um, you know, the first out in the open sort of a attack that I've ever witnessed. Um, so it was it was really shocking for our community. Um, the great thing following it though is that there are some initiatives that are underway to make sure that stuff like that doesn't happen again. So. What sort of initiatives? Uh, so we've had a, a few hui, we had a hui of community leaders um, last week, we've got another hui tonight um, with the public. Um, I know that the gangs themselves have um, had the word with each other about, you know, making sure that our town is safe, which is really cool. We're also looking at initiatives through our business association, like, um, you know, bettering our CCTV camera network. Our business association sponsors a security um, car to go up and down town at night time just to do spot checks. So um, there are things that we are doing underway um, that I think will have a real positive impact on our community here in Kaikohe, because uh, this is a really beautiful community. I really love living here. I really love the people who make up this town are real people, you know. So um, here's hoping, um, here's knowing actually that this will make a huge difference for our town. There was a real sense of fear in this town following, uh, you know, what escalated there. But I think that it has started to settle. The town is feeling uh, falling back into place uh, just from a sense of it. I live right here in the town centre, so um, get a pretty good sense of how people are feeling. And um, I think there is that little bit of tension, but there is also, you know, we're real resilient up here in the, um, in the mid-north. Uh, Look, Kaikohe is turning, in my view, into something like a narco village. Uh, the level of menace, the level of mayhem, and the total absent res absence of responsibility from both the gang leaders and the members. I would say, though, however, to the broader Māori community, there is an element amongst our community who regard the gangs as, a, as some sort of heroes. These are not heroes. It's not tolerable, in my view, and I absolutely resent seeing the degradation of the main drag. Well, I tried hard as a politician who was the regional champion and spent quite a lot of dough um, in and around the Mid-North on sports, on infrastructure, and initiatives associated with training. But there's an element of nihilism amongst uh, the younger gang members. Uh, it's impossible to relate to them on the basis of tikanga Māori or Māori culture. I think it's incredibly sad because many of them they come from families, broadly speaking, who are trying to pave their way, trying to paddle the waka in the world of light in an honest way. Uh, my own view is these young ones who are possessed by a spirit of living the life of bling and um, showing absolutely no respect or no uh, recognition of the consequences of their actions, they only understand, they, they only understand one thing. And that's what we call in the North Ringa Kaha, and that's the force of the strong hand. So what's going to be done? You want to see bike seizures? Oh, at least, at least. So there, there are consequences if you choose to spend your life harassing, menacing, and um, degrading your community. Quite frankly, we don't want you. What we're hoping for is a long-term commitment to doing something with the, the current issues that are lying in town and have been sort of growing over the years. If I go back to an event that happened a couple of, well, more than a couple of years ago, a long time ago, where um, the youth actually attacked the mobile uh, garage there, we got funding to run a youth program for two years. After two years, nothing. So that's, that's a response to the situation. So what happened to those 15-year-olds once they, once they were 17? Um, that ongoing support there. So looking for that, so that's uh, looking at the fact that at the moment the police service is very, very limited in this area. The numbers of police in Northland is limited and they are struggling to cover the whole of Northland. Councillor recently gave some stats that the average age of the community here is 28, compared to Kirikiri, which is around about 48. If you take half of that average of 28, 
are under 15. So even if we're looking at programs, um, they're programs that are for the slightly older age group. And we find that with, uh, with the presence in the community of these of, of, I'll say gangs, but I'm wanting to say we we take ownership. Um, we've got kids t t uh, telling stories, eight and ten year olds, about you know uncles involved in that, and they get such and such. Or there's this uh, glorifying of of what you can get if you become a uh, a member, even in a junior one. So there's that that's adding to the whole community. So the older gang members took out some of the younger younger guys. Just um, wait until it died down. Is that, is that basically what happened? Move them to a safe location. Yeah, rather than, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm choosing my words <laughs> carefully to be, be positive. They were they were taking that. They moved them to a safe location where they could um, address as a group some of some of the behaviours that they were seeing. First two days afterwards, the streets were pretty empty. Okay. So people are not only in fear of the COVID issue, but they're also in fear. You'll find um, starting to change now, but the cars driving down the street, they're driving slower, and it's almost they're driving cautiously looking. Right. So there's, a, to me, it's, it's a fear of the unknown, a fear of, of, well, who do we trust?